Walking into the ring at the Kemper Arena, Tommy Morrison, who boxed out of the Kansas City program as an amateur. He returns to his hometown tonight. His greatest ring success so far has been the heavyweight championship of the world in the movie Rocky V. Tonight, he looks to take one step closer to becoming a real-life title contender. Stepping into the ring, undefeated, and facing his biggest name in Pinkland Thomas. But it's a question of what does Pinkland Thomas have to offer 22-year-old Tommy Morrison. Sean, match these two up on the blackboard. Pinkland Thomas. You got to be ready early because Tommy's going to start fast and test his best punch. A powerful left hook. Keep that right high and try to beat him to the punch with a quick right of your own. Tommy Morrison, the Duke, like your great grand uncle, get those big hot guns firing early. Put pressure on Thomas when you do. He'll use his experience to hold, tie up, and lean. But don't wrestle. Pull your hands out and then punch. And Tom's tail of the tape. Morrison, 22 years old, 11 years younger than Thomas. At 6'2", 224 and a half. Thomas, 6'3", 226 and a half. And uh, it is Thomas versus Morrison. Morrison is shorter by an inch, but has the reach advantage. We are ready now for the introductions. Big crowd at Kemper Arena behind their hometown hero, Tommy Morrison. Here's our ring announcer, Paul Fred Rocks. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready to get nasty? is scheduled for 10 rounds in the heavyweight division. Your referee is from Kansas City, Missouri. Say hello to Danny Campbell. The judges scoring tonight's contest are Wendell Allen, Arthur Morey, and Ken Gray. And now, ladies and gentlemen, introducing First, in the red corner, wearing the camouflage trunks, weighing in at 226 and a half pounds, with a professional record of 30 wins, five defeats, one draw, and 24 knockouts, from Orlando, Florida, here is the former heavyweight champion. Obey my commands at all times. Have a good, clean fight. Let's go, guys. Good luck, big guy. Tommy Morrison uh, saying all the right things, having the respect for Pinkland Thomas as an ex-champion, but uh, maybe going in with the ghost of Pinkland Thomas. And Thomas trying to dispel any critics that he is washed up. But he'll have to come through tonight because he is facing his fifth defeat in his last six. And very noticeable, Sean. Here at the start of the fight, uh, Tommy Morrison has already worked up a sweat. And Pinkland Thomas is bone dry. And he's going up against a knockout puncher. Morrison, who has 21 knockouts, of which 13 have come in the first round. And he's knocked out 19 of his 21 victims in the first two rounds. But here, in the beginning, looks to be a, a respectful 
Tommy Morrison watching out for the once famed jab of Pinkman Thomas. Pinkman Thomas knows that left hook is coming, but he is a slow starter. It'll take him a few rounds to get warmed up, whereas Morrison is a quick starter. He likes to set the pace in the onset. Oh, good left hook to the body by Morrison. And that is his big punch. Morrison's last fight against uh, Quick Tillis ended very quickly in the first round. That was the biggest name he has faced. And now it is Morris putting on the pressure. Thomas is already cut here in the first round. That is over his right eye, and it is a nasty cut. Right through the eyebrow. Bring out it, bring out it. Watch the one. Morrison with a big record. Just starting at this point to get ready to face some big foes, and there's that wicked punch. Hard to imagine this one getting through the first round. Morrison, though, has not won over the critics yet. They're looking to prove that he is not just the next great white hope. He has a couple of things going for him, his left and his right. And he's got more going for him now. He's got Thomas Hurt in this first round. And these two men are fighting in a 16 and a half foot ring. There's no place for Thomas to run. And Morrison is staying right in the middle of it. He's heard it before. People saying he's a good puncher, but he can't fight. Well, Mike Tyson heard the same things. Pinkman Thomas taking big shots here in the first. And now Morrison has settled down. Steps back, looking to pinpoint his shots. And that cut is bleeding over the right eye of Thomas. Thomas has to get back to that left jab. He come out the front part of the fight. Oh, 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 that left oh, jab. And here, oh, late in the round, he's standing toe to toe. Now he's confused about the cut on his face and about the big punches that uh, Morrison is landing. He is stunned. He's rocked. This is what happens to fighters when they lose that competitive edge. They can't get out of the way of those punches. Okay. Every shot that, that Morrison is throwing is nailing Thomas. Pinkman Thomas said it earlier. He's going to fight this fight as if it were his last. It and it be. should be. Coming down to 10 seconds, we'll pause for a word from our local cable systems. And the big surprise right here is that Thomas has survived the first round. It is over. Pinkman Thomas will not come out for the second round. Cut severely on the forehead right over the eye. And Pinkman Thomas waved it off. The doctors came to the corner. They did not even have to examine him. It was Thomas waving it off. He says, that's it. I'm done. Now, it's a question of whether he's talking about just tonight's fight or uh, is it the career for the former heavyweight champion. At the end of round number one, Thomas taking a severe beating. And he goes to his corner, and this is what happened. And Tommy Morrison finds out. And for Tommy Morrison, uh, this one uh, scripted as well as Tommy Machine Gun in Rocky Five. Now back live in the corner. Morrison receiving the hugs all around. And Pinklin Thomas, who drops to 36 and 1. Well, we thought it may end in the first round, but I wrote right here, Al, what I thought would happen. And I've got. Uh, KO in the second for Tommy Morrison. I think the writing was on the wall. Pinkman Thomas was talking about retirement. Nobody did not win tonight, but uh, he put up a good talk. So Tommy Morrison, who has not exactly uh, faced an all-star lineup, his last two fights uh, have been named fighters, but names of the past. Knocking out Quick Tillis in the first round and stopping Pinkman Thomas after one. And here is the punt. That's the one that opened up the cut. The left hook from Tommy Morrison. Thomas's corner uh, contending that uh, it was a headbutt. But uh, right there, the video shows that it was the glove of Tommy Morrison that opened up the cut. 
and close the career of Pinkman Thomas. So Morris, Morrison goes to 26 and 0 with his 22nd knockout. Uh, he has been to this point taking the George Foreman approach, selecting his opponents very carefully, building up the KO record, now getting some exposure, but. He said before the fight uh, with Pinkman Thomas, he wants to step in against the world champion, regardless of what he has left, and that he's working on so many things. Uh, Morrison said he hopes this goes a few more rounds so he could show the people what he has been working on, his conditioning, uh, the speed, his movement, uh, besides the punching power, and uh, realistically looking at the big picture ahead, Morrison feels it will still take another six months before he gets uh, uh, against uh, any ranked fighters. Well, Bill Cate and Tommy Morrison's manager said that Tommy is learning so fast that he's going to be rated in the top three by the end of the year. He says we're going to speed up the process. We'll be back to talk with Tommy Morrison in just a moment. Second round TKO for Tommy Morrison and uh, Tommy over uh, Pinkland Thomas. Three minutes of uh, workout for you and uh, the indicator to Sean and I uh, beforehand was the fact that uh, you came out with the sweat and uh, Thomas was bone dry. Well, I think uh, you know coming to the ring, uh, you know, being being relaxed and being being warmed up, it's uh, just as much part of training as, uh, as sparring and hitting the heavy bag and everything else. And uh, you know, if he failed to do that, that uh, kind of gives everybody an idea of uh, maybe he was blowing a little smoke and and uh, didn't train as hard as he did. But the guy's a world champion. That's something they that can never take away from him. And uh, I respect him for that, and I respect the hell out of his uh, his, his whole camp. Tommy, you said that you're disappointed. Uh, why? Well, I, you know, I mean, after you know, you work so hard uh, for a fight, you put all the blood, sweat, and tears, and you know what I'm talking about. And to come, uh, you know, I'll take them uh, as e you know, whenever and as easy as I can get them. But uh, I was hoping that this would give me the opportunity to show uh, some of the people what I've been proving on, and uh, I think I did. Uh, I'm sharp and everything, but I felt like I wanted to uh, get into the fifth, sixth, seventh round and see uh, where my conditioning was, and also you, show people where my conditioning was. Are you also disappointed, Tommy, because you weren't able to take him out with a real clean shot? I mean, he stopped on the stool. Well, not at all. I mean, uh, you know, Pinkman Thomas is. Uh, Nationwide, world, worldwide, known as having a, a very durable chin. I mean, I you know I just watched the Tyson fight last night. They took Tyson a 19 punch combination. Mm -hmm. He's never been stopped in less than six rounds. Yes, but I uh, went uh, eight rounds with Drake Bow, which is uh, he's a health contender, and uh, I'm just very thankful that uh, come out of it uh, you know healthy. The uh, the Tyson fight though several years ago, we've seen sure. Pinkland Thompson Thomas. He's lost four out of five. And the last fight we saw with uh, Mike Hunter, he basically stood around for ten fights. Did you right. feel in going in for ten rounds? Did you feel going into this fight that it really wasn't a win situation for you. Uh, if you had gone long with Pinkland Thomas, uh, critics would have said, hey, he's having trouble with a washed up fighter. And if you beat him in one, which you did, hey, he beat a washed up well, fighter. Well, I, I uh, you know, I mean, people got their own opinion. Everybody's entitled to their own opinion. That's why it's such a great country. I mean, I, uh, you know, I went in there and did uh, establish a, a good offense. I did what I had to do. Uh, I don't feel like it, uh, it's a setback for me. I think maybe some people uh, might be a little disappointed. And uh, obviously, we're going to take another step up in opposition. And we're going to get there. But uh, people need to understand that I'm a young fighter. We've got a lot to learn. I've got to get bigger, faster, stronger. But we're certainly on the right track. And uh, we should be thankful for that. And, and so should they. All uh, right, Tommy, uh, we're going to take a look at the, the fight, the round. And I wonder if you could uh, step in, uh, join uh, Sean O'Grady as our color commentator. And uh, we'll go back to uh, the opening bell, round number one between Tommy Morrison in the dark trunks and Pinkland Thomas uh, in the light. And exactly what are you thinking of now? Well, I noticed that he came out. Was, I know he's got a, a quick, fast jab, and I was trying to, uh, to pick the jab off and counter it, uh, avoid the jab any way possible, whether side to side or up and down or a combination of both. And uh, something that, uh, that I noticed in, in uh, Pinkland's last three or four fights and, and even in the Tyson fight, not very many heavyweights go to the body. And uh, I was concerned that uh, because of his sideways stance and the way that he covered himself that he might be a little difficult to hit to the body but because of my low position I uh, come in low I get a lot of power out of that shot that's one of the shots that uh, basically uh, felt like uh, it's probably the shot that's got me where I'm at. He is one of the fighters that has a good left jab. Did, were you trying to zero in on that try to kill that jab first because he came out jabbing? Well I, I felt that uh, you know if, if I would ever tag him and, and I wanted to put him on the defensive and uh, it felt like that's something that I was able to establish about midway through the round. He he was throwing the jab and I was trying to come over the jab, uh, slip the jab to the outside and come back with a power right. And I uh, was pretty successful at that. Hit him a couple of times and uh, then it was, uh, he was worried about getting hit in the head and then it was time to go to the body and uh, make his hands come down. 
Tommy, you've shown great respect for Pinklin Thomas as a former champion now in the post game and also uh, the pre fight interviews. Had you come out a little bit nervous wondering what you would be facing? Very much so. I mean, you know, in my opinion, I think and every every great champion has the ability to pull one more great well, fight. Now they even. they had claimed that that was a headbutt, but uh, there was the punch. Could right. you? Uh, there there was a, it was a straight right hand. I mean, I saw it uh, open up immediately, and I think so did he. Uh, there was, all we did butt heads once, but it was after the after the uh, the cut was already was already there, and it certainly didn't cause another one. So uh, I was able to go to the body pretty well, as you'll see here in just a few seconds. At this point, did you feel it would be over quickly? Well, I felt I had him in. Uh, I certainly had things going my way. I was just going to slow down, try to throw more combinations rather than loading up with one shot. I knew that sooner or later uh, the opportunity would come. I certainly didn't expect this to happen, uh, but uh, was pretty successful with the things that we tried. We were very fortunate. You certainly look like you've loosened up at this point. <laughs> well, basically, you know, it, it's pretty much a. Uh, it's got that jab, and I think it depends a lot on that jab because the jab is the type of punch that keeps people off balance and keeps them from mounting a, you know, a credible offense. And I felt that I took that out of the way with uh, the body shots and getting his respect a little bit. Is there any thing, Tommy, that you learned from this fight? I, uh, I I think I, you know, I mean, obviously every fight is a learning experience. If you can go into into a fight against a former world champion and come out successful, I think uh, there's something to be learned there. Uh, he's, you know, he, he's been there and he knows what it takes. And I'm on my way there and and, and I'm willing to learn. So uh, things are working out pretty well for us. We're we're very happy. Final. Tell us what you learned in this fight? Uh, well, I, I mean, I, that's a little difficult. I mean, I, I felt because of I hurt him so early, uh, it was basically like uh, you know, just trying to put things together. Uh, had it gone a little, uh, a little uh, longer, I think I would have learned, uh, you know, and, and got the idea of what patience is all about. Because he is a very good fighter, and I was expecting him to come out. Unfortunately, uh, he didn't want to. Uh, Did you feel that he would quit here? I had no, I had no idea they would quit. And uh, I mean, he's, uh, you know, he's a very durable guy. I mean, actually, you can tell uh, that, he, that he doesn't want to go on. But uh, I think the body shots is what did it. I mean, a lot of heavyweights uh, going to stay away from body shots. That's what really does. You kill the body, they have a die too. Tommy Morrison goes to 26 and 0. He records his 22nd knockout, of which 20 have come in the first two rounds. And uh, Tommy, uh, Mike Tyson is. Heard the same thing early in his career. Guy who could punch, but he can't fight. You've heard the same thing. What sure do you have. say about that? Well, I think Mike Tyson's proved to everybody that he can fight. I mean, he's, he's, uh, he, he was a great champion, and uh, I'm probably one of the one of the uh, many people that probably be surprised if he doesn't regain the title somewhere down the line uh, if he gets his uh, personal life together. Uh, we're uh, basically in the same position that he was a few years ago, and uh, we're just as hungry, or maybe even a little hungry. And I certainly think we have our priorities a little straighter. Well, right now you go to 26 and 0, 22nd knockout. To one of your rare losses came in the amateur ranks in the Olympic trials to Ray Mercer, and I know he right now is uh, on target. Uh, you want to face Ray Mercer, who is the WBO heavyweight champ. Uh, how far away is that? Well, if things keep, uh, if we keep improving the way we have, and, and things uh, seem to go our way, uh, it's a possibility that that may occur. Uh, Possibly in July or, or sometime, uh, sometime shortly after that, and uh, I think it's a fight that would be very uh, uh, fortunate for both of us. Uh, Ray's uh, is a good fighter; he's a good puncher. Uh, he has a lot to learn. I have a lot to learn. So we're basically in the same class, and hopefully we'll be able to learn from each other. But that's a fight that certainly will happen, uh, hopefully in the near future. What happened in the fight in the Olympic trials? Well, I, I was uh, basically when I, you know, I have no excuses. He was a bigger, stronger, and better fighter than I was. I certainly feel that I've improved. Uh, uh, a heck of a lot since then and, and feel that uh, I've improved enough that it might make the difference. Against, you look forward though to, to, to uh, step in the ring before that fight. You want uh, to be a strong possibility. As a matter of fact I think we're going to fight in April uh, on the uh, Holyfield Foreman card. There's a possibility of that and it's something we're looking forward to. Uh, uh, an opponent at that point hasn't been named yet but uh, whoever it is you can bet that uh, we're going to train harder for that than we uh, you know than we have and hopefully things uh, things will go our way again. All right, Tommy Morrison, uh, Tommy Machine Gun in Rocky Five, and tonight could not be uh, better choreographed than uh, you saw in the movies. First round, Pinklin Thomas unable to answer the bell for the second.